Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this! Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? Yeah! That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I just forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya! What's up, fifth grade, and welcome to episode number 11 of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. At this time, I'd like for you to go ahead and pause the video and try these two problems on your own. If you don't have a copy of the worksheet, check out the link below or somewhere around this video. Click that and it'll take you to a place where you can download the worksheet that you need for this episode along with the other episodes in this Math FSA Bootcamp Series. So go ahead, pause the video, try it out on your own, and then come on back and join me. All right, everybody, welcome back. So you know how we do it. First, we're gonna go ahead and look at the question and identify the question type. I see four answer choices right there. So what kind of question is this? It is a multiple choice. Write that down if you did not already. Now let's go ahead and mark up our text. So this says, what is the value, which is the amount of the expression the expression is right there, and remember that expressions do not have equal signs. Equations do, expressions do not. So it looks like we are subtracting here. We've got one and two eighths minus three fourths, and we have to select the answer that we need. And I know when I add or subtract fractions, my denominators must match. I say it like this. When you add or subtract, your denoms must match. And right now, they are not matching. We have eight as our denominator and four. We need to make them match. So I'm gonna take one and two eighths minus three fourths, okay? And I'm going to take that to the side and find the least common denominator. Now remember that this is an FSA prep. So this is going over more of the style of questionings. But if you need help, with adding or subtracting fractions. I definitely want you to check out McCarthy Math 155. I will send you in the right direction for some more videos at the end of this lesson, so stay tuned, okay? I've got your back where I break it down slowly, all right? So I'm going to take my two denominators, eight and four, and I'm gonna count by eights and count by fours until I get a match. So for eight, I've got party rocking with the eights for sure. 8, 16, 24, let me stop there. And for fours, I've got 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. I could keep on going, but I already see a match. The very first number that matches, the least or lowest common denominator is eight. So that means that we can rewrite our fraction. And this time we're gonna have eights in the denominator. So now we look, how did we get from eight to eight? We multiply by one, same on the bottom, same on the top. Two times one is two, good. 
All right, now let's take a look at our next fraction. We went from four, a denominator of four, to a denominator of eight. So we multiplied by what to get there? Four times two, good. Same on the bottom, same on the top. Three times two is six. Okay, so now we have the same denominators and now we can subtract. But I also want you to take a look here because our fractions, we've got two eighths minus six eighths. It's kind of hard to do that. So what we need to do is regroup. We're gonna take a hole, take a hole away that becomes zero holes and give that hole to the two. Now it's not 10 automatically like it is with subtraction with regular numbers. What we do is there are eight whole parts that make up this fraction. So now we're taking eight of those whole parts and giving them to the two. So two plus eight is 10 eighths minus six eighths. And now I know we use addition or subtraction in the numerator, yeah man. So 10 minus six is what? four, so our numerator is four, and our denom slides across. So we have eight all the way across. Once they match, we just bring it over. So the answer is four eighths, but I don't see four eighths over here. However, I do know that one half is equivalent to four eighths, because one is half of two, and four is half of eight, and therefore they're equivalent fractions. And I know that I could divide both four and eight by four. Four divided by four is one. Eight divided by four is two, and that's how we get it to our lowest term, or it's called simplifying. All right, so that is how you do number one. Go ahead and make any corrections that you need to make and then join me for number two. All right, number two, ooh. These, these kind of, I'm noticing right away, I recognize this type of, type of question where there's a missing value right there, okay? And this is one that students, they are like terrified of this kind of question. There's somebody with a very loud bass in their car system going by, sorry. Um, these can be kind of difficult to do at first, but once you know a strategy, you can make it work, okay? There's two different ways to approach it, but I'm getting ahead of myself. That's because I'm really excited about this question. I actually love these because they're like a puzzle to figure out. That's why I love math. All right, what question type is this? Well, we see the grid that we need to bubble in at the end. So that means that this is a gridded response. So he, how do we tackle this? So let's look at the question first. What is the missing value in the equation? And we know it's an equation because there is an equal sign right there. All right, so I'm looking at it and I see three and four twelfths plus three with a missing denominator equals three and 19 thirtieths. And I also notice that these two denominators are not the same. So this is an interesting question, okay? There's two different ways that I see that I could go about this. I could try to add and fill in the missing value here or I could subtract. And I'm gonna encourage you for this one to subtract. Now you could add, but for this particular episode, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract these two types because I know the total that I'm taking three and four twelfths, I'm joining it with something else, and I'm, when I add them together, I'm getting a total of three and 19 thirtieths. So because of that, I could take the total and remove what I know to figure out what I don't know, which is subtraction. So if I just flip this around and say three and 19 thirtieths, my total minus what I know, three and four twelfths, then I'll get the missing value that I don't know. We know that when we add or subtract, our denoms must match. And right now they don't match. We've got 12 and we've got 30. So first we're gonna find the LCD of both, the least common denominator. Okay, so if I count by 30s, I would get 30, 60, 90, I could keep going. And then for 12, I'm gonna count by 12s. I got this feeling, the 12's a great. 12, 24, 36, 48, the big six zero, I've got a match. They both have 60 in common, so now it's time to 
rewrite now with the common denominator. Okay, so I'm taking my whole number three and something sixtieths minus three and something sixtieths. So how did I get from 30 to 60? Yeah, I multiplied by two, same on the bottom, same on the top. And 19 times two would be 38. Okay, 12 goes into 60, that was one, two, three, four, five times. And so four times five would be what? 20. Okay, now I can easily subtract. I've, I know that I've got 38 as my numerator minus 20 as my numerator, so that's gonna be simple to do. So first let's do the whole numbers. Three minus three is zero holes, right? And 38 minus 20 is 18. And my denom slides across, so I've got 18 sixtieths, because we don't really need that hole. 18 sixtieths, but, so we have 18 sixtieths, right? But 18 isn't there, and so this can't be 60. So I have to see now, how did it go from 18 down to three? 18 divided by what would give me three? Let me count by threes. Hit me with my threes pretty, please. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, six times. Okay, so same on the bottom, same on the top. That would give us three. And then 60 divided by six is 10. And now we have our three and what's the missing value? It is 10. So we're gonna put 10 in here as our answer. Now, if your teacher suggests that you write it like zero and one right there, that's totally cool. Follow your teacher's guide there. I personally like to start from the left and write my answer in just like that. Okay, whatever you do, you can't just put one and zero randomly in there. Don't do that. All right, go ahead and make any corrections that you need to make to your paper. And now is the time that I'm going to point you in the direction of some more helpful videos for you to use. So let's do that now. All right, so now is the time for you to take charge of your learning. This particular skill, adding and subtracting fractions, is something that I know that lots of students tend to struggle with. They do, because there's so many steps. First, you have to match up the denominator. With subtraction, sometimes you need to regroup. With addition, sometimes you have to move them around. There's a lot going on with adding and subtracting fractions. The key to understanding it and mastering the skill is consistent practice. And that's exactly why I created McCarthy Math 155. The 155 stands for 150. 55 episodes, okay? But unit six is what you want to look at here. It is a membership, so in order to see the videos, you need to be a member. However, everybody gets a seven day free trial to check it out. I definitely recommend that if you know you need help, get your seven day free trial and get those videos. Schools and districts that are using McCarthy Math 155 daily, every single day. First, you're going to notice that your students absolutely love this program, that they get excited for it, that they love the math videos. So I definitely recommend that you check it out. And teachers, if you end up becoming a member, this is something that you can share with your students. I walk through how to do just that in the tutorials tab. All right, I also wanna point you in the direction of another video with the same standard, okay? A couple years ago, I created a series called How to Pass the Math FSA, and it was created back when the FSA was a computerized test. It's not anymore, it's actually a paper-based test now, so the questions, they can look a little bit different here and there, so just keep that in mind. But overall, teachers and students are still using these videos to help lock in the skills that they need to be successful on the FSA. So check that out. Also, you may have heard me singing some of the factor songs for the multiplication mashup. I'm going to link that below too because it's always helpful, especially if you haven't mastered your multiplication facts yet. This song, it's seven minutes. If you listen to it every day, it'll help you get a lot faster, okay? I also want you to stay in the loop and you can do that by following me on my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram at McCarthy Math Academy. I'm on Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. And I'm also here on YouTube. Just search McCarthy Math Academy and you'll see me. Feel free to click subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And if you could, please smash that like button. Not just for me, even though it does make me smile that you like the video, but it also helps to attract more students. And by doing that, I'm able to reach more students. And that's exactly what my mission is, to make math fun, to make it click, and to make it stick for as many third, fourth, and fifth graders as possible. So you can help me do that by smashing the like button 
Thank you. Finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And I cannot wait to see you all on the next episode.